Over on GrabCAD, there was a question about how to place a gusset in a sheet metal part without using a quilt form. So I'm going to show you how to do that with a punch form, and we will create the punch form and then place it using three different methods. So a punch form reference model is just a Creole parametric part, and I'm going to create one. I'll click New and Part. I'm going to call it my gusset form. And you can use, use a regular solid part type. It doesn't have to be a sheet metal type. So I will click OK. And I am in my model. So let's create the geometry. And I like to create some geometry that will help me place it in the model. So I'll start off with a sketch. Let me go to my sketch view. And I'm just going to make a couple of lines. and let them snap to being equal. I'm going to use a length of 30 millimeters for this. Hit the check mark and now I can extrude this. Let's use a symmetric depth and I'll use a depth of about 20. Right now this is generating as a non-solid feature. I can right click and choose solid and I'm going to use a thickness that's big enough to see. Let's use a value of 1. And I want to thicken to the outside of the model. So this is the basis. This shows me how I'm going to place it in the model. Now let's create the actual form geometry. So I'm going to sketch on the same plane as before. And in another video, I did a profile rib. And this rib is just going to be an open section that snaps onto part geometry. Let's create our, let's see, let's do a dimension for the angle. Just make that 45 degrees. And this length over here, let's use a value of 25. All right, so that is good. Let's hit the check mark. And with my sketch still selected, I will use the profile rib, flip the arrow to add the material to the inside, and let's use a nice big width of four. And to get the geometry that they want in there, we need a round that removes this surface from the model, so that is a full round. I will click the round tool, pick the two opposing surfaces, and right now it wants to know, hey, what's the driving surface to be removed? Let's select that middle surface. I could have selected the edges and then used the full round button instead, but I like surfaces. So we'll hit the check mark, and this is all the geometry that we need. Uh, let me hide some of my different datums in here. I uh, don't need right don't need top. I'm going to leave front visible uh, to show you. And so this is the geometry that we're going to use for defining the form. So let me hop back over to the other window to place the punch form in the model. We'll go to the form drop down and make sure that we choose punch form. And if I click on the open button, I have my config.pro option set to use the forms that are provided from PTC in the punch form library, but I'm just going to grab that model I just created in session. It's right in my computer's RAM. So I will click open. And right now the method that's using is placing using essentially assembly constraints. And so I will pick this surface to be coincident with this surface over here. And right now it's giving me a distance. Let's change that to coincident. Next up, let us select a for the next constraint, this back surface, and let me query to that surface over there. Let's flip and also make that one coincident. And for my third constraint, I'm going to do a distance from this datum plane to this datum plane over here. Let's change that to a value of 50. And there we can see a preview of the geometry. Before I hit the check mark, let's go to the options tab and we can round 
the placement edges. Right now I'm using a value of the thickness of the model, but you could change that to one of the other default values like two times the thickness or half of the thickness or punch in whatever value that you want to use. But I'm happy with that. Let's hit the check mark and the form is placed in the model. Now we'll take a look at a second method of placing this. And the second method will be using component interfaces. Rather than having to select all the geometry for placing it in the form model, I can find it in the form itself. So I will go to the gusset form and click the component interface icon. I like to change the name. Let's call this place. And for the constraints, we will use this surface for a mate constraint and this surface as well for a mate constraint. And for the third constraint, we will use distance from the datum plane called front. And let's use a value of say just 20 as an initial uh, dimension. So I can hit the check mark and in my footer, we have that component interface now when I go back to the target model, let's place the form again, punch form, and it's still using the same one, but it changed the option to use a component interface. And now all I need to select is the corresponding geometry from the model, that bottom surface, query to the back surface, and now the distance, and it's using a value of 20, when I go to place it, I can punch in the new value that I want to use. Like before, I can go to the Options tab and add rounds to the placement edges, then hit the check mark. And now I've got the form placed again, and it was a lot simpler this time because of the component interface. Now I'm going to show you a third method of placing it by having a component interface that uses a coordinate system. So hop back over to the gusset form part and I'm going to create a coordinate system. And for my references, I'm going to create it at the intersection of three surfaces, actually two surfaces and a datum plane. And for the orientation, I want to make sure that the surface that's defining Y, that should actually define Z. So let me change this drop down to Z. So Z is pointing up. And let me change this to Y. That's how I like my coordinate system oriented. But the important thing is that the Z direction is pointing up relative to the placement surface. And properties, if you want to, you can change the name. Maybe I'm going to call this form placement. Click the OK button. And now let's create a, another component interface. And for this one, let's call this form CSIS. And for the reference, I will click that coordinate system and hit the check mark. So let's go back over to the target part and one more time, we will do the punch form command. Again, it's using the same reference and it automatically defaulted to placing using a coordinate system. And so for the placement surface, let me query to that back surface. And now for my offset references, I will pick that bottom placement surface and this surface over here. Let me go to the placement tab flip the placement and in this case here got the angle wrong. Let's try. Rotating it 90 degrees and the offset from the bottom surface. I don't want an offset. I actually want that to be aligned. So there we go. And this offset distance, let's increase this to 150. And like before, I can go to the Options tab and place rounds on the placement edges like before and hit the check mark. 
So in this way, I have the form placed using three different methods. Actually, let me turn my datum plane visibility back on. One other thing, now that I have these forms in here, I can select them, go to editing, and then mirror, and mirror them about the datum plane, hit the check mark, and there we have the punch form placed using three different methods and mirrored as well. So I hope this helps people with their sheet metal modeling. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.